Welcome to the fifth video on brushing up on algebra. In this video, I'm going to talk about factoring with polynomial long division. I don't know if you actually do this much in a calculus class, but I thought it would definitely be worth going over, uh, first of all, in case you do, but also, secondly, because uh, it's a, a good way to... Th it's, it's a good practice for dealing with algebra in general. So let's say we want to factor this cubic polynomial. Now, when we factor something, we want to factor it uh, into something that looks like this, x plus a times x plus b times x plus c. Now, when you look at what this end goal is going to look like, this tells us two important things about how to get to that end goal. The first thing it tells us is that, well, a, b, and c multiply to make negative 120. So it's possible, it's not guaranteed, but it's possible that a, b, and c are factors of negative 120. The reason why it's not guaranteed is because uh, this polynomial may not have integer roots. It may have um, non-rational or maybe not even non-real roots. But whenever we're, we need to factor something, we usually want to try out uh, integer roots. And generally speaking, in these kinds of classes, you will probably have integer roots. Now, that's not saying that you'll always have integer roots. In fact, in a manner of speaking, most polynomials uh, have non-integer roots, in a certain manner of speaking. But um, whenever we're told to factor a cubic polynomial, it probably has integer roots. Probably. Don't, don't take that my word on that. But um, more often than not, I'd say. So... The first thing it tells us is that it's possible, but not guaranteed, that a, b, and c are factors of negative 120. Now, this next thing, this is definitely true, not just possible, but definitely true. If x is negative a, negative b, or negative c, then this piece has to equal 0. And since this is equal to this, this piece has to equal 0. So that means that we can combine these two things together and figure out what factors of negative 120 make the entire expression equal to 0. Because if we have something that makes the entire expression equal to 0, then we can factor out x minus that number. So, um, that means that let's first take a look at what, uh, what a possible solution would be to setting this equal to 0. Any possible solution, doesn't matter what it is. So, uh, I'm this part finding a possible solution that makes this whole thing equal to zero is going to be very very tedious by hand. What you want to do is look at uh, expressions of uh, you you want to find not expressions factors of 120. See if it equals zero, and then plug in um, and, and and then factor that out. And do that by hand is really hard. So I'm going to do that with a calculator, uh, and I'm going to do it with one that works pretty similarly to a TI-83 or TI-84. Um, now, the easiest way on this, uh, to do this on an 83 or 84 would be to use a store command, like say, I want to try um, 5. I want to try figuring out if 5 gives me a uh, 0. So I do 5 and then use the S, I think it's STO key, and then put an X and then just type this in directly, x cubed plus 5x squared minus 26x minus 120. Now I'm using Octave, which is a program that works pretty similarly to a TI-83 or 84. Not exactly the same, but it's more or less the same. So let's look at factors of 120. Well, first I'll try 1. Now this I'm putting in x equals 1. That's similar to, um, similar to the store command. And now I'm going to try x cubed plus 5x, oops, 5 times x squared minus 26 times x minus 120. So when x equals 1, the entire expression is negative 140. And you, you can see why that'd be tedious to, to do by hand. But that means that x equals 1, 1 is not a root of the expression. So negative 1 is not going to be something that we could, x minus 1 is not something we could factor out. So let's try when x equals negative 1. Negative 1 is also a factor of negative 120. And that gives us negative 90. So that doesn't work. x equals negative 2 is also a factor of 120. 
and that doesn't work either. 3 is also a factor, but that gives us negative 126, so negative 3, negative 4, um, ne negative 24, so that doesn't work. So now let's, let's try x equals 4. Now x equals negative 4. Now x equals negative 4 gives us a um, gives us a 0. So that means that a, b, or c, one of those three, has to be equal to positive 4. But that means in particular that we can factor out x plus 4 from this entire expression. Because one of these two pieces, one of these two pieces, three pieces, there's three of them there, I can't count, um, is going to be equal to x plus 4. So that means this entire thing will equal x plus 4 times some polynomial. We don't know what the polynomial is yet, but it'll be x plus 4 times some polynomial. And again, the reason why is because when x equals negative 4, then the entire thing equals 0. Now, if that's confusing, um, you might either want to maybe go to Khan Academy and, and look at more detail or go through this video again. So I'm going to go ahead and factor out this x plus 4 from this entire expression. As you can see, my downloads are complete. Uh, so, that's not relevant to the video, it just came up. <laughs> so we have x plus 4, and we're pulling that out of x cubed plus 5 x squared minus 26 x minus 120. Now you could also do this with what's called synthetic division. You may have learned that before. Uh, either way works fine. I like this because it feels the most natural. It may take longer, but it just feels more natural. So I want to figure out what can I what would I multiply this by to make it equal to this? Because I want to get rid of this here. Well, x squared. x squared times x equals x cubed. x squared times 4 equals 4x squared. And this is, this is what I mean by getting rid of. Because we, after this, I change the signs and add. Now this gives me 0. This gives me x squared. So my goal here was to get rid of this x cubed by multiplying this by something that makes it equal to this x cubed. And here I have, uh, I'm going to pull down this negative 26x. And I need to figure out what times x gives me x squared. Well, that's simple enough. That's just going to be x. x times x gives me x squared. x times 4 gives me 4x. And now I change the signs on the bottom. x squared minus x squared gives me 0, which is good. That's what I wanted. 26x minus 4x gives me negative 30x. Pull down this negative 120. And uh, this gives me, so I need to figure out what times x gives me negative 30x. Again, that's simple enough. You have negative 30, because negative 30x, negative 30 times x gives me negative 30x. Negative 30 times 4 gives me negative 120, excuse me, I'm going to ahead and rewrite that. Negative 120. Change the sign and add, and I get 0, which is good. If, you're, if your remainder is not 0, then you made a mistake somewhere. So that means that my original equation, I'm going to go ahead and do this over here. That means that my original equation, x cubed plus 5x squared minus 26x minus 120 is equal to x plus 4 times x squared plus x minus 30. And now we could technically, if we wanted to, go ahead and, so, and factor this out using polynomial long division as well, but it's not really necessary because this, okay, this first piece is still x plus 4. This piece is going to be x plus 6, x minus 5. Because 
uh, 6 and 5, 6 and negative 5 multiply to make negative 30, and add to make positive 1. So this is the final factored form of the original expression x cubed plus 5x squared minus 26x minus 120. And in this case, they had integer um, roots. If they didn't have integer roots, that would kind of mess everything up. So we'd have to use complete, completely different methods, but that's for... Um, that's not just for a different video, that's for a different video series, so... Uh, that is going to be the final solution, factoring with polynomial long division. Um, I will see you in the next video.